So Zion has been destroyed. And this man has gone to pray for guidance. So he speaks to the Lord about what's happened and prays. And then he says, I fell asleep there and I saw a vision in the night. And lo, a forest of trees planted on the plain and lofty mountains surrounded it and precipitous rocks. And that forest occupied much space. And lo, over against it arose a vine and from under it there went forth a fountain peacefully. Now that fountain came to the forest, and was stirred into great waves. And those waves submerged that forest, and suddenly they rooted out the multitude of the trees of that forest, and overthrew all the mountains which were round about it. And the height of the forest began to be made low, and the top of the mountains was made low. And that fountain prevailed greatly, so that it left nothing of that great forest, save one cedar only. Also, when it had cast it down, and had destroyed and rooted out the multitude of the trees of that forest, so that nothing was left of it, nor could its place be recognized, then that vine began to come with the fountain in peace and great tranquility, and it came to a place which was not far from the cedar, and they brought the cedar which had been cast down to it. And I beheld, and lo, that vine opened its mouth, and spake, and said to that cedar, Art thou not that cedar which was left of the forest of wickedness, and by whose means wickedness persisted, and was wrought all those years, and goodness never came, and thou didst keep conquering that which was not thine, and to that which was thine thou didst never show compassion, and thou didst keep extending thy power over those who were far from thee, and those who drew nigh thou didst hold fast in the toils of thy wickedness. And thou didst uplift thyself always as one that could not be rooted out. But now thy time has sped, and thy hour is come. Do thou also therefore depart, O cedar, after the forest, which departed before thee, and become dust with it? And let your ashes be mingled together. And now recline in anguish, and rest in torment till thy last time come, in which thou wilt come again and be tormented still more. And after these things I saw that cedar burning, and the vine growing, itself and all around it the plain full of unfading flowers. And I indeed awoke and arose. And I prayed and said, O Lord, my Lord, thou dost always enlighten those who are led by understanding. Thy law is life, and thy wisdom is right guidance. Make known to me, therefore, the interpretation of this vision. For thou knowest that my soul hath always walked in thy law, and from my earliest days I departed not from thy wisdom. And he answered, and said unto me, This is the interpretation of the vision which thou hast seen. As thou hast seen a great forest, which lofty and precipitous mountains surrounded, this is the world. Behold, the days come, and this kingdom will be destroyed which once destroyed Zion, and it will be subjected to that which comes after it. Moreover, that also again after a time will be destroyed, and another, a third, will arise, and that also will have dominion for its time, and will be destroyed. And after these things a fourth kingdom will arise, whose power will be harsh and evil far beyond those which were before it, and it will rule many times as the forests on the plain, and it will hold fast the times, and it will exalt itself more than the cedars of Lebanon. And by it the truth will be hidden, and all those who are polluted with iniquity will flee to it, as evil beasts flee and creep into the forest. And it will come to pass, when the time of his consummation that he should fall has approached, that the principate of my Messiah will be revealed, which is like the fountain and the vine. And when it is revealed, it will root out the multitude of this host. And that which thou hast seen which was left of that forest, and with regard to this fact that the vine spoke those words with it, which thou didst hear, this is the word. The last leader of that time will be left alive, when the multitude of his hosts will be put to the sword and be bound, and they will take him up to Mount Zion, and my Messiah will convict him of all his impieties, and will gather and set before him all the works of his hosts, and afterwards he will put him to death 
and protect the rest of my people, which shall be found in the place which I have chosen. And his principate will stand forever, until the world of corruption is at an end, and until the times aforesaid are fulfilled. This is thy vision, and this is its interpretation. And I answered and said, To whom will these things be, and how many will they be? Or who will be worthy to live at that time? For I will speak before thee everything that I think, and I will ask of thee regarding those things which I meditate. For lo, I see many of thy people who have withdrawn from thy covenant, and cast from them the yoke of thy law. But others again I have seen who have forsaken their vanity, and fled for refuge beneath thy wings. What therefore will be to them, or how will the last time receive them? Or perhaps the time of these will assuredly be weighed, and as the beam inclines will they be judged accordingly? And he answered and said unto me, These things also I will show unto thee. As for what thou didst say, to whom will these things be, and how many will they be? To those who have believed there will be the good which is spoken of aforetime. And to those who despise, there will be the contrary of these things. And as for what thou didst say regarding those who have drawn near and those who have withdrawn, this is the word. As for those who were before subject, and afterwards withdrew, and mingled themselves with the seed of mingled peoples, the time of these is the former, and I am meditating deep things. And as for those who before knew not but afterwards knew life, and mingled only with the seed of the people which had separated itself, the time of these is the former, and I am meditating deep things. And time will succeed to time and season to season, and one will receive from another, and then with a view to the consummation will everything be compared according to the measure of the times and the hours of the seasons. For corruption will take those that belong to it, and life those that belong to it. And the dust will be called, and there will be said to it, Give back that which is not thine, and raise up all that thou hast kept until its time. Moreover, do thou, Baruch, strengthen thy heart for that which has been said to thee, and understand those things which have been shown to thee, for there are many eternal consolations for thee. For thou wilt depart from this place, and thou wilt pass from the regions which are now seen by thee, and thou wilt forget whatever is corruptible, and wilt not again recall those things which happen among mortals. Go therefore and command thy people, and come to this place, and afterwards fast seven days, and then I will come to thee and speak with thee. And I, Baruch, went from thence, and came to my people, and I called my firstborn son, and the Gedaliahs for my friends and seven of the elders of the people. And I said unto them, Behold, I go unto my fathers according to the way of all the earth. But withdraw ye not from the way of the law, but guard and admonish the people which remain, lest they withdraw from the commandments of the Mighty One. For ye see that he whom we serve is just, and our Creator is no respecter of persons. And see ye what hath befallen Zion, and what hath happened to Jerusalem. For the judgment of the Mighty One will thereby be made known. And his ways which thou passed finding out are right. For if ye endure and persevere in his fear, and do not forget his law, the times will change over you for good, and ye will see the consolation of Zion. Because whatever is now is nothing, but that which will be is very great. For everything that is corruptible will pass away, and everything that dies will depart. And all the present time will be forgotten, nor will there be any remembrance of this present time, which is defiled with evils. For that which runs now runs into vanity, and that which prospers will quickly fall and be humiliated. For that which is to be will be the object of desire, and on that which will come afterwards do we place our hope. For it is a time that will not pass away, and the hour comes which will abide for ever, and the new world which does not turn to corruption those who depart to its blessedness, and has no mercy on those who depart to torment, and will not lead to perdition those who live in it. For these are they who shall inherit that time which has been spoken of, and theirs is the inheritance of the promised time. These are they who have acquired for themselves treasures of wisdom, and with them are found stores of understanding, and from mercy have they not withdrawn, and the truth of the law have they preserved. For to them will be given the world to come, but the dwelling of the rest, who are many, will be in the fire. Do ye therefore so far, as ye are able, instruct the people, for that labor is ours. 
for if you teach them, you will quicken them. And my son and the elders of the people answered and said unto me, Has the mighty one humiliated us to such a degree as to take thee from us quickly? And truly we shall be in darkness, and there will be no light to the people who are left. For where again shall we seek the law, or who will distinguish for us between death and life? And I said unto them, The throne of the mighty one I cannot resist. Nevertheless, there shall not be wanting to Israel, a wise man nor a son of the law to the race of Jacob. But only prepare ye your hearts, that ye may hear the law, and be subject to those who in fear are wise and understanding. And prepare your soul that ye may not depart from them. For if ye do these things, good tidings will come unto you, which I before told you of. Nor will ye fall into the torment of which I testified to you before. But with regard to the word that I was to be taken, I did not make it known to them or to my son. And when I had gone forth and dismissed them, I went thence and said unto them, Behold, I go to Hebron, for thither the Mighty One hath sent me. And I came to that place where the word had been spoken to me, and I sat there and fasted seven days. And it came to pass after the seventh day that I prayed before the Mighty One and said, O my Lord, Thou summonest the advent of the times, and they stand before Thee. Thou causest the power of the ages to pass away, and they do not resist Thee. Thou arrangest the method of the seasons, and they obey Thee. Thou alone knowest the goal of the generations, and Thou revealest not Thy mysteries to many. Thou makest known the multitude of the fire, and Thou weighest the lightness of the wind. Thou explorest the limit of the heights, and Thou scrutinizest the depths of the darkness. Thou carest for the number which pass away, that they may be preserved, and Thou preparest an abode for those that are to be. Thou rememberest the beginning which Thou hast made, and the destruction that is to be Thou forgettest not. With nods of fear and indignation Thou givest commandment to the flames, and they change into spirits, and with a word Thou quickenest that which was not, and with mighty power Thou holdest that which was not yet come. Thou instructest created things in the understanding of thee. Thou makest wise the spheres so as to minister in their orders. Armies innumerable stand before thee and minister in their orders quietly at thy nod. Hear thy servant and give ear to my petition. For in a little time are we born, and in a little time do we return. But with thee hours are as a time, and days as generations. Be not therefore wroth with man, for he is nothing and take not account of our works. For what are we? For lo, by thy gift do we come into the world, and we depart not of our own will. For we said not to our parents, Beget us, nor did we send to Sheol and say, Receive us. What therefore is our strength that we should bear thy wrath? Or what are we that we should endure thy judgment? Protect us in thy compassions, and in thy mercy help us. Behold the little ones that are subject unto thee and save all that draw nigh unto thee, and destroy not the hope of our people. Cut not short the times of our aid, for this is the nation which thou hast chosen, and these are the people, to whom thou findest no equal. But I will speak now before thee, and I will say as my heart thinketh. For lo, in thee do we trust, for lo, thy law is with us, and we know that we shall not fall so far as we keep thy statutes. In this at least we are always blessed, for we are all named one people. We have received one law from one, and the law which is amongst us will aid us, and the surpassing wisdom which is in us will help us. And when I had prayed and said these things, I was greatly weakened, and he answered and said unto me, Thou hast prayed simply, O Baruch, and all thy words have been heard, but my judgment exacts its own, and my law exacts its rights. For from thy words I will answer thee, and from thy prayer I will speak to thee, for this is as follows. He that is corrupted is not at all. He has both wrought iniquity so far as he could do anything, and he has not remembered my goodness, nor been grateful for my long suffering. Therefore thou shalt surely be taken up, as I before told thee, and the time is coming of which I told thee. For that time will arise which brings affliction, for it will come and pass by thee with quick vehemence, and it will be turbulent coming in the heat of indignation, and it will come to pass in those days that all the inhabitants of the earth will be moved, one against another, because they know not that my judgment has drawn nigh. For there will not be found many wise at that time, and the intelligent will be but a few. Moreover, even those who know will most of all be silent, and there will be many rumors and tidings, not a few, and the works of portents will be shown, 
and promises not a few will be recounted, and some of them will prove idle, and some of them will be confirmed, and honor will be turned into shame, and strength humiliated into contempt, and probity destroyed, and beauty will become a scorn. And many will to say to many at that time, Where hath the multitude of intelligence hidden itself, and whither hath the multitude of wisdom removed itself? And whilst they are meditating these things, then zeal will arise in those of whom they thought not, and passion will seize him who is peaceful, and many will be roused in anger to injure many, and they will rouse up armies in order to shed blood. In the end they will perish. Together with them it will come to pass at the self same time that a change of times will manifestly appear to every man, by reason of which in all those times they were polluted and practiced oppression, and walked every man in his own works, and remembered not the law of the Mighty One. Therefore a fire will consume their thoughts, and in flame will the meditations of their reigns be tried. For the judge will come and will not tarry, because each of the inhabitants of the earth knew when he was committing iniquity, and they have not known my law by reason of their pride. For many will then assuredly weep, yea, over the living more than over the dead. And I answered and said, O Adam, what hast thou done to all those who are born from thee? And what will be said to the first Eve who hearkened to the serpent? For all this multitude are going to corruption, nor is there any numbering of those whom the fire devours. But again I will speak in thy presence, Thou, O Lord, my Lord, knowest what is in thy creature. For thou didst of old command the dust to produce Adam, and thou knowest the number of those who were born from him, and how far they have sinned before thee, who have existed and not confessed thee as their creator. And as regards all these, their end will convict them. And thy law, which they have transgressed, will requite them on thy day. But now let us dismiss the wicked, and inquire about the righteous. And I will recount their blessedness, and not be silent in celebrating their glory, which is reserved for them. For assuredly, as in a little time in this world which passeth away, in which ye live, ye have endured much labor. So in that world to which there is no end, ye shall receive great light. Nevertheless, I will again ask from thee, O mighty one, yea, I will ask mercy from him who made all things. In what shape will those live who live in thy day? Or how will the splendor of those who are after that time continue? Will they then resume this form of the present, and put on these entrammeling members, which are now involved in evils, and in which evils are consummated? Or wilt thou perchance change these things, which have been in the world, as also the world? And he answered me, and he said unto me, Hear, Baruch, this word, and write in the remembrance of thy heart all that thou shalt learn. For the earth will then assuredly restore the dead, which it now receives, in order to preserve them, making no change in their form, but as it hath received. So will it restore them, and as I delivered them unto it, so also shall it raise them. For then it will be necessary to show to the living that the dead have come to life again, and that those who had departed have returned again. And it will come to pass, when they have severally recognized those whom they now know, then judgment will grow strong, and those things which before we spoken of will come. And it will come to pass, when that appointed day has gone by, that then shall the aspect of those who are condemned be afterwards changed, and the glory of those who are justified. For the aspect of those who now act wickedly, then is that of such as suffer torment. Also, as for the glory of those who have now been justified in my law, who have had understanding in their life, and who have planted in their heart the root of wisdom, then their splendor will be glorified in changes, and the form of their face will be turned into the light of their beauty. They may be able to acquire and receive the world which does not die, which is then promised to them. For over this above all will those who come then lament, that they rejected my law and stopped their ears, that they might not hear wisdom or receive understanding. When therefore they see those over whom they are now exalted, but whom will then be exalted and glorified more than they, they will respectively be transformed, the latter into the splendor of angels, and the former will mainly waste away in wonder at the visions and in the beholding of the forms. For they will first behold and afterwards depart to be tormented. But those who have been saved by their works, and to whom the law has been now a hope, and understanding and expectation, and wisdom a confidence, to them wonders will appear in their time. For they will behold the world which is now invisible to them, and they will behold the time which is now hidden from them. And again, time will not age them. For in the heights of that world shall they dwell, and they shall be made like unto the angels, and be made equal to the stars. And they shall be changed into every form they desire, from beauty into loveliness, 
and from light into the splendor of glory. For there will be spread before them the extents of paradise, and there will be shown to them the beauty of the majesty of the living creatures which are beneath the throne, and all the armies of the angels, who are now held fast by my word, lest they should appear, and are held fast by a command, that they may stand in their places till their advent comes. Moreover, there will then be excellency in the righteous surpassing than in the angels, for the first will receive the last, those whom they were expecting, and the last those of whom they used to hear that they had passed away. For they have been delivered from this world of tribulation, and laid down the burthen of anguish. For what then have men lost their life, and for what have those who were on the earth exchanged their soul? For then they chose not for themselves that time which beyond the reach of anguish could not pass away, and they chose for themselves that time whose issues are full of lamentations and evils. And they denied the world which ages not, those who come to it, and they have rejected the time and the glory, so that they shall not come to the hour of which I told thee before. And I answered and said, How do those forget for whom woe is then reserved? Why therefore again do we mourn for those who die? Or why do we weep for those who depart to Sheol? Let lamentations be reserved for the beginning of that coming torment, and let tears be laid up for the advent of the destruction of that time. But even in the face of these things I will speak. And as for the righteous, what will they do now? Rejoice ye in the suffering which ye now suffer. For why do ye look for the decline of your enemies? Make ready your soul for that which is reserved for you, and prepare your souls for the reward which is laid up for you. And when I had said these things, I fell asleep there, and I saw a vision. And lo, a cloud was ascending from a very great sea, and I kept gazing upon it. And lo, it was full of waters white and black, and there were many colors in those selfsame waters. And as it were, the likeness of great lightning was seen at its summit. And I saw that cloud passing swiftly into quick courses, and it covered all the earth. And it came to pass after these things that that cloud began to pour upon the earth the waters that were in it. And I saw that there was not one in the same likeness in the waters which descended from it. For in the first beginning they were black exceedingly for a time, and afterwards I saw that the waters became bright, but they were not many. And after these things again I saw black waters, and after these things again bright, and again black, and again bright. Now this was done twelve times, but the black were always more numerous than the bright. And it came to pass at the end of the cloud that, lo, it rained black waters, and they were darker than had been all those waters that were before. And fire was mingled with them. And where those waters descended, they wrought devastation and destruction. And I saw after these things that lightning, which I had seen on the summit of the cloud that held it fast, made it descend to the earth. Now the lightning shone exceedingly, so as to illuminate the whole earth, and it healed those regions where the last waters had descended, and wrought devastation. And it took hold of the whole earth, and had dominion over it. And I saw after these things, and lo, twelve rivers were ascending from the sea, and they began to surround that lightning, and to become subject to it. And by reason of my fear I awoke, and I besought the Mighty One, and I said, Thou alone, O Lord, knowest of aforetime the deep things of the world, and the things which befall in their times thou bringest about by thy word. And against the works of the inhabitants of the earth thou dost hasten the beginnings of the times, and the end of the seasons thou alone knowest, for whom nothing is too hard. But thou doest everything easily by a nod, to whom the depths as the heights are accessible, and the beginnings of the ages minister to thy word, who revealeth to those who fear and what is prepared for them, that he may thereby console them. Thou showest great acts to those who know not, Thou breakest up the enclosure of those who are ignorant, and lightest up what is dark, and revealest what is hidden to the pure, who in faith have submitted themselves to thee, and thy law. Thou hast shown to thy servant this vision, reveal to me also its interpretation, for I know that as regards those things wherein I besought thee, I have received a response, and as regards what I besought, thou didst reveal to me, and didst show me with what voice I should praise thee, or from what members. I should cause praises and hallelujahs to ascend to thee. For if my members were mouths, and the hairs of my head voices, even so I could not give thee the meed of praise or loud, thee as is befitting. Nor could I recount thy praise, nor tell the glory of thy beauty. For what am I amongst men? 
or why am I reckoned amongst those who are more excellent than I? That I should have heard all those marvelous things from the Most High, and good tidings numberless from him who created me. Blessed be my mother amongst those that bear, and praised among women be she that bear me. For I will not be silent in praising the Mighty One, and with the voice of praise I will recount his marvelous deeds. For who doeth like unto thy marvelous deeds, O God? Or who comprehendeth thy deep thought of life? For with thy counsel thou dost govern all the creatures which thy right hand has created. And thou hast established every fountain of light beside thee. And the treasures of wisdom beneath thy throne hast thou prepared. And justly do they perish who have not loved thy law. And the torment of judgment will await those who have not submitted themselves to thy power. For thou, Adam, first sinned and brought untimely death upon all. Yet of those who were born from him, each one of them has prepared for his own soul torment to come. And again, each one of them has chosen for himself glories to come. For assuredly, he who believeth will receive reward. But now, as for you, ye wicked, that now are, turn ye to destruction. Because ye will speedily be visited, and that from time to time ye have rejected the understanding of the Most High. For his works have not taught you, nor has the skill of his creation, which is at all times persuaded you. Adam is therefore not the cause, save only of his own soul, but each one of us has been the Adam of his own soul. But do thou, O Lord, expound to me regarding these things which thou hast revealed to me, and inform me regarding that which I besought thee? For at the consummation of the world there will be vengeance taken upon those who have done wickedness according to their wickedness, and thou wilt glorify the faithful according to their faithfulness. For those who are amongst thine own thou rulest, and those who sinned thou blottest out from amongst thine own. And it came to pass, when I had finished speaking the words of this prayer, that I sat there under a tree, that I might rest in the shade of the branches. And I wondered, and was astonished, and pondered in my thoughts regarding the multitude of goodness which sinners who are upon the earth have rejected, and regarding the great torment which they have despised, though they knew that they should be tormented because of the sin they had committed. And when I was pondering on these things and the like, lo, the angel Ramael, who presides over true visions, was sent to me. And he said unto me, Why does thy heart trouble thee, Baruch, and why does thy thought disturb thee? For if, by the hearsay which thou hast only heard of judgment, thou art so moved, what wilt thou be when thou shalt see it manifestly with thine eyes? And if with the expectation wherewith thou dost expect the day of the Mighty One, thou art so overcome, what wilt thou be when thou shalt come to its advent? And if at the word of the announcement of the torment of those who have done foolishly, thou art so wholly distraught, how much more when the event will reveal marvelous things? And if thou hast heard tidings of the good and evil things which are then coming, and art grieved, what wilt thou be when thou shalt behold what the majesty will reveal, which will convict these and cause those to rejoice? Nevertheless, because thou hast besought the Most High to reveal to thee the interpretation of the vision which thou hast seen, I have been sent to say to thee, And the Mighty One hath assuredly made known to thee the methods of the times that have passed, and of those that are destined to pass in his world from the beginnings of its creations, even unto its consummation, of those things which are deceit, and of those which are in truth. For as thou didst see a great cloud which ascended from the sea, and went and covered the earth. This is the duration of the world, which the Mighty One made when he took counsel to make the world. And it came to pass, when the word had gone from forth from his presence, that the duration of the world had come into being in a small degree, and was established according to the multitude of the intelligence of him who sent it. And, as thou didst previously see on the summit of the cloud black waters which descended previously on the earth, this is the transgression wherewith Adam the first man transgressed. For owing to his transgression, untimely death came into being, and grief was named, and anguish was prepared, and pain was created, and trouble perfected, and boasting began to be established, and Sheol to demand that it should be renewed in blood, and the begetting of children was brought about, and the passion of parents produced, and the greatness of humanity was humiliated, and goodness languished. What therefore can be blacker or darker than these things? This is the beginning of the black waters which thou hast seen. And from these black waters again were black derived, and the darkness of darkness produced. 
for he was a danger to his own soul, even to the angels was he a danger. For, moreover, at that time when he was created, they enjoyed liberty, and some of them descended and mingled with women, and then those who did so were tormented in chains. But the rest of the multitude of the angels, of which there is no number, restrained themselves, and those who dwelt on the earth perished together with them, through the waters of the deluge. These are the black first waters. And after these waters thou didst see bright waters. This is the fount of Abraham, also his generations, and advent of his son, and of his son's son, and of those like them. Because at that time the unwritten law was named amongst them, and the works of the commandments were then fulfilled, and belief in the coming judgment was then generated, and hope of the world that was to be renewed was then built up, and the promise of the life that should come hereafter was implanted. These are the bright waters which thou hast seen. And the black third waters, which thou hast seen, these are the mingling of all sins, which the nations afterwards wrought after the death of those righteous men, and the wickedness of the land of Egypt, wherein they did wickedly in the service wherewith they made their sons to serve. Nevertheless, these also perished at last. And the bright fourth waters which thou hast seen are the advent of Moses, and Aaron, and Miriam, and Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, and of all those like them. For at that time the lamp of the eternal law shone on all those who sat in darkness, which announced to them that believe the promise of their reward, and to them that deny the torment of fire which was reserved for them. But also the heavens at that time were shaken from their place, and those who were under the throne of the Mighty One were perturbed when he was taking Moses unto himself. For he showed him many admonitions together with the principles of the laws and the consummation of time as also to thee, and likewise the pattern of Zion, and its measures, which was to be made in the pattern of the sanctuary of the present time. But then also he showed to him the measures of the fire, also the depths of the abyss, and the weight of the winds, and the number of the drops of rain, and the suppression of anger, and the multitude of long-suffering, and the truth of judgment, and the root of wisdom, and the riches of understanding, and the fount of knowledge, and the height of the air, and the greatness of paradise and the consummation of the ages, and the beginning of the day of judgment, and the number of the offerings, and the earths which have not yet come, and the mouth of Gehenna, and the station of vengeance, and the place of faith, and the region of hope, and the likeness of future torment, and the multitude of innumerable angels, and the powers of the flames, and the splendor of the lightnings, and the voice of the thunders, and the orders of the chiefs, the angels, and the treasuries of light, and the changes of the times, and the investigations of the law. These are the bright fourth waters which thou hast seen. And the black fifth waters which thou hast seen reigning are the works which the Amorites wrought, and the spells of their incantations which they wrought, and the wickedness of their mysteries, and the mingling of their pollution. But even Israel was then polluted by sins in the days of the judges, though they saw many signs which were from him who made them. And the bright six waters which thou didst see, this is the time in which David and Solomon were born. And there was at that time the building of Zion, and the dedication of the sanctuary, and the shedding of much blood of the nations that sinned then, and many offerings which were offered then in the dedication of the sanctuary. And peace and tranquility existed at that time. And wisdom was heard in the assembly, and the riches of understanding were magnified in the congregations. And the holy festivals were fulfilled in goodness and in much joy. And the judgment of the rulers was then seen to be without guile, and the righteousness of the precepts of the Mighty One was accomplished with truth. And because the land was then beloved at that time, and because its inhabitants sinned not, it was glorified beyond all lands, and the city Zion ruled then over all lands and regions. These are the bright waters which thou hast seen. And the black seventh waters which thou hast seen this is the perversion brought about by the counsel of Jeroboam, who took counsel to make two calves of gold, and all the iniquities which the kings who were after him iniquitously wrought, and the curse of Jezebel, and the worship of idols, which Israel practiced at that time, and the withholding of rain, and the famines which occurred, until women ate the fruit of their wombs, and the time of their captivity which came upon the nine tribes, and a half, because they were in many sins. And Salmanazar, king of Assyria, came, and led them away captive. But regarding the Gentiles, it were tedious to tell how they always wrought impiety and wickedness, 
and never wrought righteousness. These are the black seventh waters which thou hast seen, and the bright eighth waters which thou hast seen. This is the rectitude and uprightness of Hezekiah, king of Judah, and his benignity which came upon him. For when Sennacherib was stirred up in order that he might perish, and his wrath troubled him in order that he might thereby perish for the multitude also of the nations which were with him. When, moreover, Hezekiah the king heard those things which the king of Assyria was devising, to come and seize him and destroy his people, the two and a half tribes which remained, nay, more he wished to overthrow Zion also. Then Hezekiah trusted in his works, and had hope in his righteousness, and spoke with the mighty one, and said, Behold, for lo, Sennacherib is prepared to destroy us, and he will be boastful and uplifted when he has destroyed Zion. And the mighty one heard him, for Hezekiah was wise, and he had respect unto his prayer, because he was righteous. And thereupon the mighty one commanded Remael, his angel who speaks with thee. And I went forth and destroyed their multitude, the number of whose chiefs only was a hundred and eighty-five thousand, and each of them had an equal number at his command. And at that time I burned their bodies within, but their raiment and arms I preserved outwardly, in order that the still more wonderful deeds of the Mighty One might appear, that thereby his name might be spoken of throughout the whole earth. Moreover, Zion was saved and Jerusalem delivered. Israel also was freed from tribulation, and all those who were in the Holy Land rejoiced, and the name of the Mighty One was glorified, so that it was spoken of. These are the bright waters which thou hast seen. In the black ninth waters which thou hast seen, this is all the wickedness which was in the days of Manasseh, the son of Hezekiah. For he wrought much impiety, and he slew the righteous, and he wrested judgment, and he shed the blood of the innocent, and wedded women he violently polluted, and he overturned the altars, and destroyed their offerings, and drave forth the priests lest they should minister in the sanctuary. And he made an image with five faces, four of them looked to the four winds, and the fifth on the summit of the image, as an adversary of the zeal of the Mighty One. And then wrath went forth from the presence of the Mighty One to the intent that Zion should be rooted out, as also it befell in your days. But also against the two tribes and a half went forth a decree that they should also be led away captive, as thou hast seen. And to such a degree did the impiety of Manasseh increase, that it removed the praise of the Most High from the sanctuary. On this account Manasseh was at that time named the impious, and finally his abode was in the fire. For though his prayer was heard with the Most High, finally when he was cast into the brazen horse, and the brazen horse was melted, it served as a sign unto him at the time, for he did not live perfectly, for he was not worthy, but that thenceforward he might know by whom finally he should be tormented. For he who is able to benefit is also able to torment. Thus, moreover, did Manasseh act impiously, and thought that in his time the Mighty One would not inquire into these things. These are the black ninth waters which thou hast seen. And the bright tenth waters which thou hast seen, this is the purity of the generations of Josiah, king of Judah, who is the only one at that time who submitted himself to the Mighty One with all his heart and with all his soul. And he cleansed the land from idols, and hallowed all the vessels which had been polluted, restored the offerings to the altar, and raised the horn of the holy, and exalted the righteous, and glorified all that were wise in understanding, and brought back the priests to their ministry, and destroyed and removed the magicians and enchanters and fortune-tellers from the land. And not only did he slay the impious that were living, but they also took from the sepulchres the bones of the dead and burned them with fire. The festivals and the Sabbaths he established in their sanctity, and their polluted ones he burnt in the fire, and the lying prophets which deceived the people these also he burnt in the fire. And the people who listened to them when they were living, he cast them into the brook Cedron, and heaped stones upon them. And he was zealous with the zeal of the Mighty One, with all his soul. And he alone was firm in the law at that time, so that he left none that was uncircumcised, or that wrought impiety in all the land, all the days of his life. This, moreover, is that he that shall receive an eternal reward and he shall be glorified with the Mighty One beyond many at a later time.
so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video presentation. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the video, and share it on your favorite social media sites. There's a lot more to come, so stay tuned, and we'll see you back next time.